Hello everybody, welcome back to the channel. This is Michael, KE4EST. And today I have got this MFJ1278. And for those of you that's familiar with this, from back in the late 80s, early 90s, these units. And I know some of you uh, still use them. I still like to mess with APRS and stuff. I've got... I've got a 1270, a 1274, 1276 somewhere that somebody gave me that the guy, he don't know what he did with to it. He was trying to hook stuff up and he said something smoked. And that's one of them things years ago I never got to. I used a 1270 a lot, or a 1274, I think it was 1274C. I used that a lot back in the early mid 90s I had three digipeters running on three different mountains I had three um, let's see two 1274s and a 1270 at the house in my shack set up running three different radios I was really uh, got into it a lot but anyway this is a 1278 and if you like I was going to say for those of you who are familiar and you look at this, this is an early model. Because they had the 1278 of you know of these units. Um, this is the 1278 model. And this one um, doesn't have a B on it. it. Don't say turbo up here. There's nothing down here that says mail indicator or anything like that. No mail built in mailbox. This is one of the early units that I picked up recently. And you got a really good deal on it. I guess it, I don't know if it works or not. I found it somewhere, and I don't know. Is you know, I don't remember the story where he got it. If it was you know somebody that died, stuff or whatever. Even know what it was. He said you might find this interesting. I'm like, well, it's really interesting. I used to really, I was really heavy into packet radio, real heavy into it. Um, I even wrote my own software at the time because when these came out, because I got the uh, I've got a couple of the PK 232s, 232 MBXs, and all that, also. But anyway, that's besides here and they're there. But all of them, you know, Cantronics, Dow come out, you know, with a full blown TNC, you know, not the little tiny cheap ones that would plug into the back of your computer and you had to, you know, the brains was in the computer. This here's got the full brains in it, you know, it's got a. Uh, I'm pretty sure it's got an 8088 in it processor and everything. It's full standalone, run by itself, full computer inside. Um, but you want something, you know, to interface with it when you're, especially back in the day, you're sitting there, got a bunch of people going, you're talking to them, connecting people, talking, and typing in, chit chatting away, you know. And this was back, you know, they didn't have internet. Internet was starting to come around, but it was very, very early infancy. You know, they wouldn't grab your phone, smartphone, and text somebody and all that, you know, so this was, it was neat at the time, and especially to go over radio waves and um, talk to, uh, go through satellites with it and stuff and all that. They had the software that came with this, MFJ software. I just did not like it. It was just, it was pretty much plain Jane serial terminal. I mean, it wasn't completely basic. It had a couple of little features, but it just was not, wasn't cutting it. So I experimented around, started writing some software for it. And got, you know, the first software steps I could talk to the serial port. And when I, you know, something comes in through this, it comes across the screen on the computer. If I type in something, it goes out. And I was like, okay, I want to split this. I want, if I type in down here and what comes in up here. And I want to add buffers and I want to, add, you know, different things where I can type in you know, have stuff already set up. You know, my name is Michael. I live in North Carolina or whatever, and I could just hit the button and it would send it out. So, um, you know, just don't pack it. And then, I, you know, I would play with CW on like these here, the 1278 model and things like that. It was neat. But anyway, this one I picked up, so I wanted to look at it and go over it. and um, thought maybe somebody would find it interesting because the only reason I... I wasn't really going to make a video on it, but this power button ain't doing anything here. It's like stuck, so I've not plugged it in yet. 
and let's see i don't think it's you can see there i kind of shift this around and move this i don't think let me find i don't think you know it's hanging up see there's a gap you know sometimes they'll hang up and get drag you know on the side of this or something so i don't know if somebody's dropped it or it's just it's you know and sometimes these switches and i'll show you while i'm yapping let's get this thing apart it should be just four little screws you take out but um these things these switches sometimes are they'll you know setting for years they'll get jammed up in there and you can and i'll show you what you can do unless there's something i'm just not remembering here oh look at all of them chips you could take every bit of this now and just about stick it on one microcontroller except for some of the extra fancy stuff or whatever you want to do but this whole thing here could shrunk down to one microcontroller pretty much but it's still super neat. Um, just like, you know, I love the tube tube stuff and anything is vacuum tube and older electronics, you know, and this is, you know, this is the, the, that's 85, but let's see, when did this TNC? 88's on the board there. And like I see, there's your CPU Z80. Uh, I said 8088, didn't I? I meant Z80. I don't know why I transpose those in my head, but that's what I meant to say. But anyway, um, uh, the 12th week of 1988, 31st week of 1987 is when this is the I.O. chip that goes with the 80. Kind of like, a, what is it, 6510? It goes with 6502. I might be getting that number wrong. A 6510. You know, having a computer that's got a, or something like this, it's got a 6502 processor that does all your I.O. stuff. Um, or now, you know, if anybody messes with little microcontrollers or Arduinos or Raspberry Pis, it's all built in now and you got your GPIO ports coming out and your pins and then you can you just tell it, I want to turn this pin on or this pin off or whatever. And before this here would talk to this to tell you, and then you have your pins here. This would be your GPIO stuff coming out of this. Um, anyway, let's get to this switch, but it's just, I had to stop and look. I hadn't had one open in a long time. But you see this switch here. Um, you see how you can, well, my phone's just going crazy over there, ain't it? They put, there's a retaining clip right here. That way you can see it. See this retaining clip. And these here is kind of like, when they put these together, there's four little studs sticking up there. Okay. And some of them are clipped over. And this one here looks like it's been, it's kind of cut off and with a hot knife. When they run it through the, they put the switch together in the machine. And it puts this cover over it. And then it comes across here and cuts that off with this hot knife. It kind of, you know, flattens these out, for lack of a better word, to hold this on. And then you still got this retain clip just in case up here where this part, see this part's supposed to snap in and out when you push that. It's, it's press in, you'll click on, click off, click on. Let's see, it's trying to get it on. I heard it click. There it goes. See, it goes off. So, I mean, it might be. What we can do is we'll take this out. And let's see. We'll have to take this board out, won't we? Which won't be. Yeah, we'll take the board out. Uh, five screws. And take this out and fix that. You can take a hot. Or not a hot knife, just take a razor knife and kind of cut those off. Take this retain clip off once this is out. And you can pull this cap off of here. Get the spring out of your way. Like that. And then you can 
go in there sometimes and lubricate this and that's all it needs. But just to make sure, let me see something here. This is, I said I didn't think it was dragging and I don't, it looks like maybe it is. You see this right here, that's not a reflection. Well, there is some reflection there. It's hard to see, it's so shiny. There's some stuff there. Where this has been, any marks where this has been dragging, so maybe it is, let's see. Oh, I can't, wait a minute, I need to take that knob off first. Let's just see here. Now, we will move that over there. Let's back this up. You can see it. These screws might be they're supposed to be a little different size, but that one's the same size. See, I've had these parts. It's been years, but I remember. Well, maybe not. I know it's hard to see on camera. I'm just looking. I don't know. Should be a different size. I'll put that over by so. Now that is definitely smaller. See, somebody stuck the wrong one in there, but I could tell by looking. See all this here. This has been open several times. And I was going to show you. Look at the mileage on this here. You see that? I don't know which camera is going to pick it up better, but you see that? Yeah. The other side too. Lots of mileage. I don't know why. This don't have the real time clock chip. There's MFJ. Oh, it's been a long time. Let me look it up. I'll put it on the bottom of the screen here. I think it's MFJ 43. Is it 43 or 47? Well, let's just look it up and see here. Okay. That was fast through the magic of editing, but it is the MFJ 43. Real time clock. It says 1278 real time clock, but. Like I was saying, it will, um, it'll work on, uh, I had this, I didn't, I never had one in 1278, I was having my 1274s, this will work on 1274, 1276, 1278, um, I don't know, let's see, come on over here, so everybody can see you. Um, well, well, well. Here it is. Well, all models, all FJTNCs and multi-modes except 1278B and BT, which is the B Turbo version, but it doesn't say doesn't say there in that manual. Uh, description is very, very descriptive. Um, what's interesting is this is at MFJ's website right now, and it says it's in stock. Where did I see that? I seen something. I seen it where it said in stock. It says order now, but it said in stock somewhere. Anyway, I didn't know you could still buy those. That's pretty neat. But this is what it looked like. And what you would do is you would take out one of these chips here. So these are your RAM chips. I think it has to be this one. This one's only got one RAM chip populated. I think it has to be this one. I guess I could look. Let me just look. U25. Yep, U25. Okay, you take this out, and then you put that, you know, take this out, put the 
thing you're seeing there on the screen, the real-time clock module in place. And then put the, you can see it's got a place for a chip on top of it. And you put this on top of it. And that's pretty, that was pretty neat. And what it did was, you know, kept time all the time. You turn it off, unplug it, power goes off, whatever. It still kept time. It was real nice. Especially when I was running nodes and I was running uh, a mailbox service where people could leave each other messages and all that stuff. And it would always make sure, you know, they knew what time it was. The message was sent and stuff. I know it probably sounds crazy now, but back then it was, uh, it was kind of important, more important than what it is now. But let's see now. Now look at that. Well, this just turned into a short video, or shorter than I thought it was going to be. I bet that battery's dead. I don't know. Somebody might have changed. It's, it's Sanyo. San, it's looks like a modern battery. I don't think they had those back in the 80s and early 90s. But well, okay. Well, let's do something else real quick then before I reach around the camera here. Let's see if it smokes or anything. There's the full 12 volts. I don't know if we'll see this much in the... Well, it lit up. Power lights on. Connect status light they stay on until you usually until you hook it up to a computer and it does its little dump if you can see this maybe that's already hunting for a signal but okay pretty neat well what's can we say about this is let's take power off of it i have to hook this up now and see how see if it still works just because lights come on I don't mean it's going to work. It's probably going to be 300 bald. It's going to be fun to watch it. The newer ones in the back over here, the newer models like the B and B Turbo and the 1274s and all that, they had a set of dip switches that you could you select dip switches to uh, one little set here was to select, you know, if you want three, the, you know, the talking to the computer, you want 300 bald, 1200 bald, 9600 bald. I think it went up i don't i don't know how fast it, it would go to um i don't know about this one but i know the b model and stuff it went up pretty good i don't know if it was 192 or 57 it might have went up to 115 200 i don't remember but that was just the speed but with these you know you're talking 1200 baud packet to somebody or 300 baud packet on hf or cw or something like that 9600 was fine you set the little switches um and then you could the other set of switches i don't remember exactly there's a little set of like three or four here not the whole thing of eight and i don't remember if it was to set the bald rate for either radio or if that was all done in software i can't remember speaking of software there's the modem chips Receiver and transmitter, 2206, 2211. There's a LM358, that's a dual um, op amp. There's your firmware, RAM, IO chip, CPU. What else? A bunch of glue logic, as they call it. This here is for an add on option or something else. Um, as I remember it being blank in one of the ones I had. Maybe it was that 2400 baud modem, and that was 2400 baud, you know, for your radio. Um, and then later the turbo would do 9600 baud. As long as you had a radio that would do it, and that's pretty much where they stayed now. Like all this things now, um, is either 12, most APRS is 1200 baud still on VHF, UHF, and all that. And some of it's 9600, and if you didn't know, maybe you, you do now, the like the Yezu System Fusion and stuff like that, that's running 9600 baud. That's what it is, a bunch of digital data. It takes your voice, turns it into a digital 9600 baud. That's the speed that it's running over the radio, over the airwaves there. So 
anyway, I don't see anything else right off the top of my head, but uh, maybe, maybe you found this video interesting and um, bring back some memories for some of you and some of you don't know or if you get one of these and say, what's inside that thing? Well, that's what it is. I guess if I was going to put this back in full-time service, um, it being from the 80s, it's probably okay because it's, these capacitors are Nishikon. I would still change out this one and that one at least. Um, but it'd be proper to change out all the electrolytics. What's this thing right there? Four megahertz. Four megahertz. What that? This here set four for these two here to run. Well, that was that was faster than some of the earlier, you know, the uh, early Ataris and Commodore computers that was running about one megahertz or one point C. The Atari was around one point seven nine megahertz. Apple IIe was running what one megahertz. So this thing was smoking, wasn't it? Come out in the late eighties. This one has, of course, the two radio ports and the extra stuff for doing like CW and all that. Because this is the the 1278 would do a bunch of different digital modes: RIDI and Bordeaux and CW and Packet and um, Weather Facts and maybe it was two or three other things I'm not thinking of off, off the top of my head. Um, and it was at the time it was cool to have this. Something like this. And they weren't cheap either for the time. It's nice to have something you can sit there and just type on your keyboard and it will send the CW out and it would decode the CW coming in as long as it's pretty good, you know. Somebody was sending him a straight key, it was just learning and it was really bad or really chirpy or something. You know, he had a bad tube in your uh, radio or something. And it was really, had a, you know, it was hard to copy it. But if it was good code, especially if you had somebody had one of these, somebody had one on the other side, he was sitting there and just go back and forth to 50 words a minute, you know, no big deal. And uh, I remember all those CW guys, oh, that's cheating. That's not the way to do it. You're never going to learn it that way. <laughs> but it was neat to have this do ready and all that stuff too, you know. Um, whereas like the 1274 was a cheaper model. I only had one radio port or the 1270. Uh, the 1274 was a little fancier had more stuff in it and things it would do than the 1270 would. Um, but they were mainly made for packet, HF and VHF packet, 300 ball and 1200 ball packet. I think they do weather facts and one other thing. And then they came out with the Pactor version. It would do Pactor. And then they finally came out with a 1276 that said Pactor right on it. And I kind of think Pactor kind of came and went. I think I've heard a few people still messes with it, but I think Pactor is one of those modes that came and went almost like a one hit wonder or something but anyway i guess we're not going to be tearing into this thing today so until the next one this is michael k4est 73